Hi, I'm Mike. I make music as domestic scene and today I'm in this creepy ass basement because I'm going to be building a case for my Eurorack modules. I moved to Germany from the US and when I did that I left all of my woodworking stuff, um, sold most of it and uh, what I did keep is in a couple of boxes that my brother or my mom, I'm not really sure, uh, has and yeah so I don't really have a whole lot here in Germany so here I am in the like I don't know the utility room uh, <laughs> in a basement that was originally built in the 1200s, I think. This building's from the 1700s, but yeah, this, this basement's seen some history. Initially, when I took on the project of doing a Eurorack uh, system, I wanted to make a case and all of the modules in it out of uh, DIY kits, uh, perhaps even m more DIY than a kit, like sourcing parts. I wanted to learn all of that stuff. I wanted to learn how to solder and I wanted to make my own case. The plan was that I was going to join a makerspace in the town that I live in, and they had the equipment and the facilities for me to do some of the work like the case building and woodworking and things like that. And they even had like a small electronics room, so I, I, was, I thought I was all set with that, but COVID has definitely put uh, a wrench in that plan. Uh, last I knew that that group was struggling to keep uh, rent on their space. Um, who knows what's going to happen, but I hope the best for them. So I think it's worth mentioning that uh, the decision to make your own Eurorack case is possibly not the best decision for you. There's a lot of commercially available options which are really, really good, and you're going to struggle to uh, to find the right power supply and the right materials and the right design to compete with those commercially built uh, Eurorack cases and get something done cheaper. Um, it's definitely possible, but it's going to take some careful planning and it's going to take uh, it's going to take access to tools which you already have in a space that you already have. And if you have that stuff, go for it. Uh, but if you don't, you might want to think about it because there's there's some really really uh, affordable options out there. Um, not to mention other people that are making beautiful cases to order. So you can look on Etsy or eBay um, or reverb shops, things like that. And there's some really cool people that are coming out with some amazing designs that you could just order and have something unique made just for you. And that really is a viable option. So why would you want to build a case? I think building a Eurorack case is... Uh, it goes right with the ethos of, of modular. A modular synth, what's so alluring about that? The fact that you can switch things out, that you can customize, you can make it your own. Nobody else has your system. Um, and yeah, like that just to me, it just makes sense that you would want a case that's unique, that, that fits your personality, that fits your aesthetic. And uh, yeah, that's a big, big reason you might want to make one. So uh, weigh those things, you know. Maybe, maybe when you're starting out, focus on building the modules. It might just be a good idea to find a solid case that's going to fit your needs for you know, a while uh, with an ambition that once you know where you're going with your, your Eurorack system, what your use case is, if it's something that you want to perform with and travel around with, if it's something that's just going to sit in your studio, kind of be a piece of furniture in there, uh, that, will, that will really guide you into what you want for your case. And, uh, and, and yeah, once you, once you know what that is, then, uh, then start thinking about building your dream case. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, uh, just make some patches.
So there we go. It's my first Euro rack case, 104 HP skiff, and yeah, in the end, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, there's some things I'd love to improve about it if I make another one. Like primarily, this uh, this power bus is a little bit overkill for the the skiff. It's not really designed for a skiff, um, and I kind of had to make some compromises in the design to get the uh, the power connection and the button to work, but uh, it works and it will definitely get me by for a while um, and I'm looking forward to using it. If you'd be interested in me in making another video, maybe a little bit more detail and kind of a walkthrough about how to make a case, uh, I could be interested in that, maybe put together uh, some real plans and, uh, and, and walk you through how to build one yourself. Um, yeah, let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.